Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, and this is Chatting with Chap, and I'm your host, Ginger Wade. I'm so glad you've joined me today. I did miss last week. It was tech week for my show. I am the director uh, of a show every play, and it was just a little too crazy to get on and talk to you guys last week. So um, I'm here today, and we're going to talk about declaring the praises of God because it's Thanksgiving week. Wow, it's Tuesday of Thanksgiving week, so that means in two short days we're going to be celebrating a day of Thanksgiving. It's good to be thankful all throughout the year, but we're going to talk about that a little bit. My little tip I'm going to give you today with homeschooling is if you feel like you need a little bit of extra guidance or a little bit of fresh ideas, um, we have a course called Homeschool University. I don't know if you've seen this advertise it before, but it starts strong Pennsylvania and uh, it goes over the law and it goes over a bunch of different ideas and aspects of homeschooling. It's a great resource. You can check it out on our webpage, chatonline.com. Um, it's also helpful for veteran moms. I went through it and I was really, I was like, wow, that's really good things to think about. So it is a helpful thing. Anyway, let's jump right into our topic at hand which is Thanksgiving. Woo! I hope your turkeys are defrosting because if they're not already, you're going to have a hard time getting them right in time. So, um, so many ways we can be thankful and things we can do with our kids here, but I'm going to talk about our hearts today. So I'm going to start by reading 1 Peter 2 verse 9, and um, I think I need my readers. So I'm going to put those on to read this. So I'm going to read this to you. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Proclaim his mighty acts or declare the praises of God. So here's a thought. Um, in my head, maybe not in yours, but in my head, I think America's off the rails a little bit. Things are going a little kooky in our country right now. Uh, we were once a people. We loved God. We followed his word. We were dedicated to him. Uh, what happened? Like, what's going on? Well, let's let's ask some questions about that. Um, is part of the answer to that question that we have not declared praise to him as stated in 1 Peter 2? You know, like we are a, a chosen race, a royal priesthood. In order that we can declare praise to God, the purpose of being those things is to, to declare praises to God. Have we been doing that? Have we been giving him the credit? Um, have we forgotten to attribute victory to him? This is one of the things that I always make sure, and since I just finished a drama production, we'll go there. I direct a drama every year for 7th through 12th graders, and I pray over every rehearsal, every performance, everything we do. And I make sure, especially when we get to the, the when we get to performance nights, and the performances went really well, but regardless of how they go, I give God the glory for everything that happened, everything that we learned, everything that we did, everything that we were able to accomplish. And every year, God does amazing things in the production of these shows. It's amazing to me how he meets our needs and the people he brings in to help us. And every time I, get, I bring all my kids in this year, it was 24 kids and six crew members, and we get on our knees and we... Um, we pray to God, we give him the, the glory and we give him thanks for what he has done because it's by his hand that we're doing these things. So my question to you is, are you attributing your victories to God, to God's hand in your life? Are you seeing how he's working in there? Have you, we told our children, are we telling our children about the victories that God has done in us or around us or in our communities or in our families? Um, if we're not telling our children about these victories, they're not going to be able to see or understand how God works in their lives. They're not going to be able to attribute their own victories to God's hand working in their lives and how he is uh, caring for us and faithful to us and all these things that are going on in our lives. So one of the things we need to learn uh, for personally for ourselves is how to see that God working in our lives. How can, how can we see that his hand is active? How can we see that he is helping and supporting uh, even when it's not what we want. You know, we might take us down a path, a direction, or a decision is made that we don't really agree with, and we're kind of frustrated by it, maybe even irritated, maybe even having adult tantrum. You know, raise your hand. Adult tantrums, they happen. So um, God is working in all these things, okay? And we need to teach our children to see and accept that God is working in all these things too. God has a plan, and it is perfect. And sometimes... Maybe more often than not, 
for some of us. It's not what we're thinking should happen. So when you're thinking about America, I think about the Constitution, doing a Constitution class with my sophomore this year. And um, the Constitution was written by a people who read Scripture and knew Scripture. Many people believed in God. Not all of them, but many of them did. Uh, it was written for people who also were of the same mind. They were a godly people. So written by a godly people for a godly people. Our Constitution and the way our country runs, our government, it only works for people who are willing to govern themselves, to yield themselves to God and to see God's sovereign hand in all things. Uh, and to follow the truth of the Bible and the things that are in the Bible that are good and healthy for the way of us to live. Right. Those are the, the instructions that are in Scripture that we are given. OK, so that's the way our, our country was set up. If we're not functioning that way, if that's not the, the people that we are, our government doesn't work. Are we seeing that? Uh huh. That's what we're seeing right now. So this week, you know, we're in Thanksgiving. And of course, you guys are reading Thanksgiving books to your kids and, and doing wonderful history lessons. Yes. Thank God. For Squanto, Massasoit, the Wampanoags, all the Native Americans who were there, who helped the pilgrims, who helped them survive. They helped them. Thank God for them. Because without them, we would not have lived. Thank God for them. That is God's gift to us. That happened because God gave us that gift. So give him praise for that and have your kids, you know, well, it's their Thanksgiving song or something out there, some kind of praise thing to God for what God did in our history. But also, don't forget to praise God for things in your life, things that are going on specifically for you or for your children, for your family, for your church. Give credit where credit is due. Okay? Give God the glory. Declare God's praises. So the more often you are acknowledging his hand in your daily life, it's going to be easier for you to see it. So if you're looking for it, you'll see it. It'll be easier for for you to see it more often, even in little tiny things. And I think God is actually doing things and moving mountains that we aren't even aware of. And we may become aware of them later, but at least right now we're not aware of them. Um, praise God for that. Give him thanks for that. Stuff that you don't even know that he has spared you from or saved you from. Uh, so there's so many things I think that we just don't even know. Uh, and speak about it to your children. Make sure that they see it so that they're able to recognize things in their own lives and to be thankful and grateful in their hearts, too. So remind yourself and your kids that as believers in Jesus, you are, let me read them again, you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's own people. Why? Why? Because we are these things. We are to declare God's praises, or other versions say, proclaim the mighty acts of him. We are those things in order to give God glory. Okay, that is the purpose. So parents, see the hand of God in your homeschool. Even in the tiniest, seemingly insignificant stuff that's happening in your homeschool, this tiny little progress, give God praise. Uh, the tiny little change, the tiny little bit of uh, character growth that you see in your children it's a reason to glorify God. There's millions of reasons to glorify God, right? So when we are looking for reasons to glorify God, we will not be looking for things to criticize, right? So if we're looking for the good stuff, we're looking for even stuff that we may not call good, but they're opportunities for growth. We can praise God for those opportunities. If we are looking for ways to praise God, we're not going to be looking for ways to criticize others. And that's going to be healthy for our relationships, it's going to be healthy for our mental well-being, right? If we're, if we're thinking on, you know, what does it say? The, what is pure, noble, right, just, anything that is excellent or praiseworthy. When we're thinking about those things, man, it totally changes our countenance and our well-being and our mind and our focus. I think of Ephesians chapter 429. It says to say things that build others up. Be careful what you say. Watch your words. Make sure you're saying things that build others up, not tear others down. So as a country, we need to turn back to a people that have gratitude in our hearts for God. I think we're spoiled. <laughs> Honestly, I think we're spoiled. We haven't had tough times. We hadn't had to rely on him. We've had a pretty easy road for a while. And I think that gratitude is slipping away. I think that's so important to teach your children to have hearts of gratitude. And this is the perfect week to be teaching about it. But keep doing it. Keep doing it throughout the year. I pray that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope that it is a time of joyous 
thanksgiving and gratitude, whoever you're with, if it's family or friends, neighbors, whoever it is that you welcome around your table or wherever it is that you go, take that gratitude with you. Take the joy. Take a helpful hand. Be thankful for the day. Be thankful for the country. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for your homeschool. So many things. And I think if we work on our hearts to become more grateful, gratitude-filled hearts that are willing to say thank you, uh, it's going to change the world, honestly. Grateful hearts uh, are happy hearts, right? Didn't Veggie Tales sing that? A thankful heart is a happy heart, right? So give thanks to God as you continue to train your children to follow Christ in all of life this week and the coming weeks as we enter into this wonderful season of um, holidays and celebrations. Let's continue to give God thanks and praise. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back next week. I will be doing q and A. I I know my Q&A is really late because of what happened with my show, but I will be doing Q&A next week. So if you have any questions that come up between now and then, please send them in to me and I will answer them next week. But I'm so glad that you joined me today. Have a great Thanksgiving, praising and thanking God for what he's doing in your life. So thanks for joining me today and we'll see you again next week. Bye now.